Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm the one they call PG by and you're most welcome to join me here. Okay, so I thought that we should talk about what happens to like the rest of the world if Amber Heard is lying. Like, what does it mean for the rest of us? And so I sat down and I thought about it and there's a couple things that I came up with. So let's get into them. Okay, so the first and most obvious thing that you could think of is that victims of domestic violence will face incredible amount of scrutiny because if we are punishing the wrong individual or sending the wrong people to jail, we need to know so that we can stop that. So unfortunately, the end result of if she's actually lying is that old cases might be scrutinized and people might be re-looked at and victims might be a lot more pressure might be placed on them to remember events in the exact specific way that things are meant to be expressed or said and unfortunately a lot of the testimonies that they give might be thrown out as an end result of her potentially lying on the stand. One of the lesser known effects is that now it potentially gives male abusers someone to sympathize with. Male abusers can go to the court system in, and stand the accused of hurting other women, right? I don't really want to gender it, but I'm just making, making sure that we understand the context of what's happening. And these people can stand before a judge and say, it's Johnny Depp and Amber Heard all over again. I've never been this way, Your Honor. I've never done these things. I've never hurt this woman. Yet she's deliberately going out of her way to harm me, to try to manipulate people in my life and to hurt my finances. And that's the unfortunate reality, that if she's lying, the implications for, for victims, if she's not a victim, then actual victims, is so much greater now because she's a prominent individual on the stand, not necessarily telling the truth, if that is the case. This case is as polarizing as it is already. For victims of domestic violence, the potential have to consider that someone who is a prominent figure in Hollywood is lying might cause them a lot of trauma. They might say, oh my word, I've just been abused again. I've trusted in this person and believed them and their story. And they are lying. They're not telling the truth, you know, and that's awful. It's so awful. I, it would have to be very, 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 very deliberate and very strange of Amber Heard to stand up and tell such big lies. So I don't know the truth for certain, but I do know that if she stood up and lied in front of the court, she's not just hurting herself, she's hurting millions of women that believed her story at the same time. And that is awful. That would be awful. It can lead to victims gaslighting themselves. And that's a reality because victims of abuse may struggle with derealization or with imposter syndrome which is attributed to the feeling of you not being like in your body you are detached from your surroundings you're not really feeling like who you are inside of yourself you feel like you are a spectator of what's happening in your life and gaslighting um, in abusive relationships looks like this where a person will say to themselves maybe i'm wrong maybe i wasn't abused maybe you know maybe i was the aggressor maybe this is the case and then you have to find out which where's the parts that you figure okay no this is really abuse and this is something that happens to victims of abuse all the time we have to just go through the motions of trying to figure out was I the abuser this whole time, like this individual said? Was I the, the person that aggravated the situation? Am I to blame? Did I hurt them or did they really hurt me? And that's the gaslighting. So a ton of people can potentially be gaslighted by their own situation because they believed Amber if she's lying. 
Women of the Me Too movement worked extremely, extremely hard and they pushed back against the industry so hard they wanted to just tamp down on the experiences of sexual harassment and rape and sexual abuse and all different sorts of types of abuse. So if Amber's lying, she can potentially unravel all of the work that has been done so far and the industry can remain skeptical for when women step forward and talk about the experiences because now no one wants to have another Amber Heard situation. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? It would be incredibly, incredibly brutal and really, really harsh if the truth is that Amber is lying about what happened in her relationship for so many of these reasons. Not all of the fallout of if Amber is lying is necessarily bad. I think that this can potentially also lead to men standing up in the entertainment industry to say, hey, some of these women did these things to me as well. And this is also abuse. So let's talk about it and let's support men as well. We have to learn to separate the gender from abuse and separate the age from abuse. Because when you think of the word abuser, you have to understand what is the image that appears in your mind? What does that particular person look like and why? And then you have to actually reflect on what is abuse. So it can open the door to men stepping up, especially in the entertainment industry, to talk about their own experiences with abuse, which would be absolutely wonderful and incredibly liberating. So this can also lead to us having a more critical eye when trying to understand what abuse looks like in relationships and it can really open the door to us um, starting to like as the audience and as as the sort of unwilling participants or in some cases the willing participants trying to dissect what abuse looks like and that can also lead to reflection in which we go hey hang on a second my ex did this to me, my parents do that to me, all that stuff. And then say to yourself, oh dang, have I been going through an abusive relationship? How has this affected me? What is my trauma? What kind of actions do I take as a result of this thing? So it's really good for us to have this type of analysis and do a lot of introspection so that we can understand our relationships, learn how to forgive people and learn how to move forward with our lives, not being a victim of trauma. Finally, this is a wonderful side effect of this trial. The fact that we're hearing words like reactive abuse, like we're hearing things about personality disorders, we're hearing all of this new, um, I suppose you could call them buzzwords right now. But what would happen is that we will start looking into this and start understanding how it affects our society and how minorities are coping with these things because when it comes to abuse men are a minority you know or people who identify as males even people who identify as genderless or gender non-conforming um, or non-binary these are all actually little niches they are all minorities and we don't talk about the abuse of them as frequently as we talk about women abuse and i believe that the reason we frequently talk about women abuse is because it hasn't been solved yet. It's been like a hundred years since women have been fighting for their rights and we're still fighting. We haven't yet achieved it. So these little minority groups, <laughs> little minority, um, they haven't had that opportunity yet. They are not necessarily banded together in a noticeable way so that we can hear their voices as well. And I just want to make it clear to everyone, anyone at any age can be a victim of abuse or a perpetrator of abuse. The way that we understand how to not be that way is to be cautious that we can become that way because there are motivations and traumas that motivate an abuser to become that way. So if you are a victim of abuse, the, the statistics show that the chances that you will become an abuser are also incredibly high. So we need to start addressing these issues and not be afraid to tackle the issue of abuse or saying and feeling and understanding that I was abusive in the past and this is why, this is how I changed that and this is how my testimony, my story can help you to not be that person. So this trial, um, even whether or not Amber is telling the truth or lying, can really produce these heartfelt conversations where we can get to the root of problems in society. Sorry, 
<laughs> that we can help people heal and move more towards a place where they can understand their trauma and have healthy relationships without letting their trauma control their actions. Okay, so that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for your script job today. Unless otherwise indicated, all following scripture quotations are taken from the Holy Bible New Living Translation with copyright by Glendale House Foundation, used by permission of Glendale House Publishers, all rights reserved. Okay, that's it from me. I really appreciate you being here and I hope that you have an absolutely fabulous day further because you absolutely deserve it. Cheers! Chocolate